morning, everyone. Do you hear the birds? I am out here in nature, guys. Holy, holy. This video is being uploaded with my Nomad internet. If you need some high speed traveling internet, check the link in the video description below. I am loving this, guys. <laughs> Look at my campsite here. No service of any kind. This is my first time here to Fish Trap Lake, Hog Lake. Uh, property of uh, the Department of Natural Resources here in Washington State, which is reopening. Not all of them, not all 72 campgrounds, but I've never been here before. I did have to get my $35 Discover Pass. I've got my Department of Fish and Wildlife Vehicle Pass. And I've also got a fishing license, a non-resident fishing license, fresh water for the summer. So some of the campgrounds aren't quite open, like over on the west side of the state, Liar River, my favorite campground in the whole country, not, not quite open. But not a whole lot of people out here using this area, and I got a really nice, cool campsite here. It wasn't easy to get level, but I did get level, and uh, another little treat. Just like my last video at Lolo National Forest, somebody had intentions of camping and enjoying a nice fire here and left a bunch of wood. I'll, I'll definitely burn a couple of those pieces and leave some for the next people. Look how huge this campsite is, though. And I know people have pulled all the way down between that big boulder. I just didn't want to take the chance. Plus, I'm level right there. I'm happy. So there should be a lake. Let's go walk to the water. Uh, I won't get much solar for the rest of the evening, but you might be able to hear my AC on the roof. Probably not. Anyway, eh, I'm going to keep the AC on for Jack. So it's a little warm. It's now 77 degrees outside. It's a little warm for me. <laughs> not complaining, just pointing out a fact. It's warm for me. Hey, are these huckleberries or salmon berries? I can't remember. I think they're huckleberries. Mm. That was a really weird tasting huckleberry. I don't know, Eric. <laughs> uh, okay, hold on. It's a little hike. Not, not too bad. There's your Discover Pass required sign here with a lot of bullet holes in that sign. <laughs> wow. Okay. This is kind of strange, but the gate to the lake to park for day use is closed. And I'm assuming locked as well. Otherwise, it wouldn't be closed. Yeah, they have uh, locked it. So you, you can't currently drive down and use it for day use, but you can camp here and walk to the lake, I'm guessing. It doesn't say I can't walk past this. I think it's mainly meant for... For driving. So, I don't know what to expect. I don't even know what this place looks like, but we're gonna go on a hike. I can kind of see water through the trees over there. I smell water. I know we gotta be close to water because I hear, I smell mosquitoes. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh my gosh. Guys, we found the lake. Get a load of that. Oh my gosh. Don't go cl too close to the edge here, Eric. Okay. Oh my. Are you seeing this, guys? That's real life. Nobody's out here. The only ones that... What a graffiti over there. Are you kidding me, guys? Sick puppies. And, you know, the water's not too clear. I wouldn't swim in that. Would, would you swim in that? I don't know. I don't know. Disgustingly beautiful. What are you going to do with that, Eric? What are you going to do with it? <laughs> Enjoy it. Man. I love it. I love the state. I don't like the politics and current events. <laughs> and everything else going on in this particular state, but... Let You guys can take over downtown and do whatever you got to do to get your point across. If it's that important to you, go for it. For me, I'm going to camp out here by the lake if that's all right with y'all. <laughs> and share it with you. Yeah, I'll put some GPS coordinates in the video description below in case you want to come out here to Fish Trap Hog Lake. Hog Lake. Oh, man. Oh, okay. I totally missed this trail the first time. I didn't even see this little trail. And we're just going to hug the uh, lake there. Cool. 
Nice. Wow, this is really pretty through here, actually. Not too many people get to see this beauty, guys. I love getting out there and exploring. Oh, man. Careful. Oh, it's kind of jackety through here. Yeah. Definitely not a wheelchair accessible trail. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> All kinds of walking trails. It's actually getting really dense with shrubbery. Why couldn't they just make the trail like along the bank of the lake down there? Why do we have to go up so high around it? <sighs> because nature, Eric. Because nature. Yes. You know what I absolutely have not been thinking about? Rattlesnakes. There's two rattlesnake holes right there, right on the trail. And yeah, they are here. Okay, be careful. Okay, let's take another break and actually look around this lake because there aren't too many places in the country. This is a, a pretty decent sized lake, right? All around the banks, it's all natural. There's no homes, there's no hotels or anything. It's just all natural beauty. It's pretty amazing. I love it. I hear something. I hear something. All right, we are now on the other side of Hog Lake. We started way around the corner on the other end of the lake. Guys? Okay, we're gonna get closer. Hang on. Okay, we're almost as far as we can go. Would you have guessed that we would stumble upon a waterfall in a lake? It's a small lake. And I really did not expect to see a waterfall at the other end. Uh, but yeah, that's probably why the water is actually so clean is because this beautiful flowing water is just constantly adding new fresh mountain water to it. So that is gorgeous. The sun has not quite set. It is over on the other side of the mountain. So it's, uh, it's getting a little darker here at my campsite. I've decided to start up the fire a little earlier than I was going to start it up because I'll be honest with you, this place slightly, slightly creeps me out all alone. I almost feel like I, I would feel safer about it if somebody was camping nearby. I'm not saying right next to me, but in the campsite next, like the one up the hill maybe, or down the hill or something, if one other person was camping here. But, you know, this is this bear country. There's obviously rattlesnakes and other things, and, and um... I don't know. I'm just, I'm probably not going to be out here once it gets pitch black. But I do have some wood to burn, so I put some cardboard underneath some of these uh, small, smaller pieces here, and I think we're going to be good to go. Right, got that side lit. Go over there and light that side. TP. I'm using all this extra TP to burn. Start a fire. <laughs> it'll work. I think it'll work. Yeah, maybe a little bit right there, too. Oh, yeah, that's what it needed right there. We got a smoker, guys. A lot of garbage in the pit. I should have cleaned that out, but I'm just using this one side right here. Is it going to start? Come on. Catch some of that wood. Oh, it's very slow going in there. There we go, maybe. Come on, get the wood. I want to hear some crackling. Crackalackling. I'm always a little cautious about starting fires and, you know, when there's stuff in there that I don't know. Cause I, you never know if somebody put a lighter or an aerosol can or some kind of flame accelerant or, 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 or ammo. I mean, uh, for me, I'm just, I'm a little more, I'm a little more careful when I can literally see weird stuff in there. Still don't hear any wood crackling yet. Come on. It wants to. Boy Scout Nomadic Fanatic, here we go. I think she's gonna go. I think she's gonna go. So in order for me to hit my target date arrival to the, the Pacific Ocean for the 4th of July, the big fireworks spectacular on the beach, I do have to put on some miles tomorrow morning though. About a five and a half hour drive farther. I'm gonna actually cross the Cascade Mountains tomorrow. You guys come with me. 
I got to check in and dump the tanks and do a couple things. So, yeah, I, I am planning to uh, really enjoy the 4th of July on the beach. It's supposed to be open and fireworks are allowed. So I've been there before. It's a it's a lot of fun. Uh, wish everybody happy 4th of July. I'm out here at uh, Ocean Shores on the uh, Washington State coast. It's pretty awesome out here. You don't bring your own fireworks because it's literally like go all the way around the beach. There's fireworks everywhere. Nothing but campers and, and pickup trucks and, and music and, and uh, fireworks and it's good times, good times. So I'll definitely be uh, showing some video once I get to the ocean too. But I enjoyed the free wood and I'm leaving some for the next person that's at this campsite. I'm going to listen to some tunes here and then uh, I'll catch you guys in the morning. All right? Sounds good? All right. I wasn't listening to Taylor Swift. That's not, oh, that's not what I was listening to. I was listening to something totally better than that. Morning everyone. I had a really nice time lapse set up last night. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't make it very far into the night as people just continually kept coming through past midnight. And I think I figured it out. It's like people come here even though the lake part is closed to overnight parking and camping and everything. I think people still have been sneaking in here in the past. And so everybody was coming down here and shining light on the RV and ruining my night lapse, my star lapse that was supposed to be perfect. And they go down there, back in, park in front of my RV for like five minutes, think about what to do next, and then leave. And that happened like eight times overnight. And before I even came out to grab my camera and said, no, I'm not leaving my uh, time-lapse camera outside. There's way too much traffic. And it shouldn't have been that way, but it is what it is. Didn't get the shots I wanted to. We got to get on the road. I'm going to pack it up. We're going to go west today. Now, I will probably highly regret this decision to move on today because I have never camped on the Natchez River. But today, it's open. Natchez River camp, you saw where my RV's at. Look at the river. Oh man, it's got that green clear tint to it from the mountains. Thing is, there are no services or facilities here and I'm, my tank's full. I had to dump my tank. I had to get drinking water. <laughs> Uh, so I do have to go utilize a thousand trails. Maybe I'll come back here. We'll see. We'll see how things go. I, I'm really glad to see some of these National Forest campgrounds opening back up though. Ah, uh, yeah, I'll remember this spot. Mm. And welcome to paradise. <clears throat> it's kind of a joke, however, <laughs> this place is called paradise. Uh, this is the first thousand trails I've been able to go to since March in Florida, the other corner of the country before COVID hit and they shut them all down. Uh, what's Thousand Trails like post COVID? Well, uh, besides busy and full, as far as camping, here, let's go on a little walk. So while I can't speak for every Thousand Trails in the country or even every Thousand Trails here in Washington, I will let you know how this first Thousand Trails I've been to has responded to post COVID life reopening. Uh, they have made the decision to close up every single amenity for the rest of the year. Everything's closed. And I'm talking the pool, the hot tub, the clubhouse, the pool house, bingo, the laundry room, the tennis courts, the basketball hoop, the horseshoe pit, the volleyball courts, the bathrooms and showers. I'm not allowed to put my own kayak in the lake and I can't fish. Everything is closed for the end of the year. Is that a little rash? Possibly, yeah, I mean, a lot can change in a couple days or even a couple weeks, let alone an entire year. This, this could be the new norm for Thousand Trails. Yeah, the pool and the hot tub have both been drained as if they may never be reopened again. Also, I feel like I should probably address to my viewers because I know this is gonna keep coming up. Yes, I am aware of what the Washington State face mask thing. It's, there's several of these around the country, however, <laughs> Like I keep pointing out in the comments, uh, 
Washington State uh, Governor Inslee said that face masks are required in public where social distancing is not possible. It literally says in the mandate that if you are by yourself and you're six feet away from people, you do not have to wear a mask. So, guys, I'm not going to wear a mask when I'm by myself. Period. I'm not going to argue with you about it. If you can't handle that, leave now. Like, seriously, I, I, can't, I can't handle the ignorance and hate right now. I just can't, okay? There's nobody near me. Relax, guys. If I go into the store or I go hang out with people and I can't maintain six feet of distance, that's when I wear a mask. That's how it works, guys. So again, stop. Look, I, uh, I've emptied the tanks. I've got water. They also told me on the phone when I got here to, to limit my time outside my RV. They want us to stay in our RV, stare at the wall. It is what it is, right? Just letting you know. So I'm going to get back on the road. I'm going to go back to the woods where I'm happy because I'm not really happy here. Better videos coming though. Sorry for the rough ending there. Just, uh, I don't know. Nobody else has shared what Thousand Trails is really like. So wanted wanted to uh, do that. <laughs> All right, bye guys.